Mm, that's drunk. Licensed games made in the 80s and 90s usually have a really bad rap, and while there's plenty of quality licensed games to choose from, there's more than enough crap. Or at least completely unmemorable generic stuff. Blues Brothers for Super Nintendo follows the formula we all got tired of even back then. You find a franchise that's available to be licensed for cheap, you create a completely nondescript game around it, and you essentially let the name of the game do all the work in terms of sales and marketing. Now, through this project channel thing, I've been trying to play through as many of these kinds of games as I could just because you never know when you might find something that's actually decent. Hey, just a few weeks ago I took a look at Time Tracks, and what do you know, that game is actually a pretty okay playthrough. There's plenty of other stuff too that you may not expect to be all that good, like Alien 3, Judge Dredd, or the Jetsons' Invasion of the Planet Pirates. Blues Brothers, however, well, let's see, how many words can we come up with for generic? Uh, we got ordinary, characterless, featureless, garden variety, yet the game is completely non-offensive. It's a classic case of a game that's not that bad, but I have absolutely no reason to recommend this one. It's supposedly based on the Blues Brothers, and yeah, you can play as Jake and Elwood Blues, and the Blues Brothers was a kick-ass movie way back when, but uh, why is there a Super Nintendo game based on a movie made in 1980, which itself was based on a Saturday Night Live act that hadn't been popular since the 70s. And it certainly doesn't help that this game could seriously be anything. I mean anything. Just flip the Blues Brothers sprites to, I don't know, the world of Peter Rabbit and Friends and change all these records to carrots or something. You wouldn't even have to change anything else. That is how generic this game is. But that didn't stop Titus, yes that Titus, from cranking out this game. Now just FYI, the Super Nintendo edition of this one isn't to be confused with the Blues Brothers game made in 1991 for Amstrad, Commodore 64, Amiga, Atari ST, you know, all the usual PC suspects. The Super Nintendo game is actually a sequel made in 1993, yet the visuals and presentations still very much look like an Amiga game, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean it just looks like about a thousand other 90s Amiga games. You get a health meter for 5 lives, along with 5 continues to get through 34 short levels, with your main attack being a projectile you throw using either the A or X buttons. In each stage you start out with a certain number of records to throw with plenty of opportunities to find more. You can also hold down X or A to throw a super record, and in two-player mode you can give your partner more records if they run out by hitting them with records. I mean geez, with the number of vinyl records getting thrown around here, you'd think if they just wanted to replenish their ammo, they'd go to a record store and ask for all the Seals and Croft or Dan Fogelberg records, and they'd be set for life. You can also pick up enemies and throw them, which kinda serves as your melee attack. You play as either Jake or Elwood, but like I said, this game is two-player co-op, where you can jump on each other and use one character to boost another, so that's nice, until you realize that the hit detection between the two characters is so freaking finicky that all you end up doing is bumping each other off of small platforms and pushing each other to their death. There's also little platforming touches that exacerbate the problem big time, like when you hold the Y button, it speeds your character up Mario style, and essentially makes your two characters bump into each other like speedballs. Normally, I'd be keen on recommending a game with two-player co-op, but the controls and interactivity between the two characters are so bad that eventually you will just stop playing this game and instead try and come up with the most ridiculous way to die. And you will die a lot, with the number of insta-kills around every corner. The goal of each stage is to reach the jukebox at the end, and you do that by traversing these boring ass levels that seem like they were just thrown together in a day. Seriously, there's nothing in this game from a level design standpoint that you wouldn't find in a game like Bubsy, or Rocky Rodent, or The Adventures of Mighty Max, or frickin' Captain Novelin for Pete's sake. Have I made it clear enough that this game is bland as hell? It's like its blandness is infecting me, and by proxy I'm making this video bland. But hey, there's things you can collect, like pieces of cake that increase your strength and give you the super blues. Uh, the manual does not describe what that is, but it does turn you into a Duke Nukem looking guy doing a Duke Silver cosplay for a little while. So yeah, Blues Brothers is one of those games where the instruction manual is like 8 pages long, and really it doesn't even need a manual because it's the same old stuff. I mean, when you're working with a property like Blues Brothers, you'd at least expect the music to be good, right? Hence all the musical notes and records and stuff, but no, more generic milk toast crap. One odd thing about this game is that while there's 34 levels on single player mode, that number goes down to 25 on multiplayer. I don't think I'd ever come across that before, where a game spares you its misery when you have a second player with you. Okay, that might be a bit harsh. This game isn't that bad, it's just so dreadfully boring. There's even a controller command that kills both players when you press start and then select. You both just die. That's hilariously bizarre, and it's about the only interesting thing about this game. 
All right, I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.